Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, I'm going to be going over the theoretical and applied applications of ANOVA and MANOVA analysis. ANOVA is used to find group differences between one dependent variable and MANOVA is used to find group differences among more than two dependent variables. You're going to want to use MANOVA if the dependent variables are actually correlated with one another. If they're not correlated, then it just does not make any sense to utilize MANOVA to identify relationships among your many different dependent variables. You can technically run ANOVA on all of your dependent variables, so you have an ANOVA test for each of your dependent variables separately, but MANOVA could do this simultaneously where you have all of your dependent variables that are your Y variables and you have your independent variables that are trying to predict those dependent variables so you can have the relationship status inside of this particular analysis when you're utilizing MANOVA. So just to use an example, let's try to answer the following. Do sophomores and juniors defer in their SAT scores on the math section and reading and writing section? Notice in this question prompt there are two or more dependent variables where the dependent variables in this case is a math section and the reading and writing section scores. You could technically run two separate ANOVAs, one that has a dependent variable of the math section score and the other has a dependent variable of a reading and writing section score, but you won't be taking advantage of the unique effects that MANOVA will provide when looking at the results simultaneously. MANOVA will test to see if there is a difference between sophomores and juniors when considering the simultaneous scores of their math and reading and writing sections. We usually have a p-value of 0.05 or 5%. However, you can change this threshold value to 10%, 1%, or whichever values you deem fit. It is entirely subjective. If MANOVA values are significant, meaning if your model p-values are less than the threshold value, you can now interpret the ANOVA results. With n number of dependent variables, divide your threshold value by the number of dependent variables. So, if we were to have a p-value of 0.05 and we have two dependent variables, we will have a new exacting p-value of 0.025 or 2.5% which we'll then use to see if our variables matter to the overall model. This is known as a Bonferroni correction. Okay, so first things first, we want to make sure we set our working directory to wherever our location of the data is located at. And I'll be working with our data set Cooked Turkey, uh, where essentially I will be utilizing these two variables, uh, the representation variable and the treatment variable in order to determine our dependent variables that we have going on over here. And these dependent variables are cooking loss, pH level, moisture, fats, hex value, which is the hexanol content, non-hem, which is that, I'm not even going to try to say that, so iron contents, and we can have a cooking time. I went ahead and I've already written out some of the logic, but essentially what you want to first do is to read in your data. I'll be working with the cooked turkey data set where I have all these variables and our dependent variables are going to be the cooking loss, the pH, the moisture, the fat levels, the hex, which is the hexanol content, and the non-hem, which, which is that, and the cooking time. And we'll be predicting these variables utilizing the uh, repetition variable and the treatment variable. Our data set is not that large. Uh, we only have about uh, 25 observations with nine total variables. And so the entire point of this is to identify the relationships among our different features, given all of our numerical data that we are working with here. And so the overall question that we want to find an answer to is to see if there is a significant difference in our seven dependent variables in our data set, giving our independent variables. And in order to do some cleaning, I have I just set all my Y variables of the cooking loss, pH, moisture, fat, hex, non-hem, and cooking time to the Y variables, and I associated my rep variable and my treatment variable as a factor in order to act as the independent variables that we'll be utilizing. 
And over here, I've written out the logic on how to actually utilize a MANOMA function. It's really quite simple. It's very similar to the linear modeling uh, function where we have our Y variable, tilde, X variables. And so since this is an additive model, uh, we're not associating additional factors. Uh, we just have our repetition factor and the well, representation factor and we have the treatment factor over here. So let's run that. And I need to run this first, of course. And then this and so as we can tell this is not very interpretable uh, we just have associated terms with the residuals and its associated values with that and so we have to run an additional test to get some more information out of this manova test and as I've said in our theoretical portion, we are going to be utilizing a p-value of 5% as our threshold. We don't necessarily have to use 5% as our threshold, but in this case, I will. The main point here is to make sure that our p-value is consistent throughout all of our tests. And we're going to be using the Wilkes, Roy's, Hotelling, Lolly, and the Polize test in order to see if our independent variables have any effect to our dependent variables. And so let's run the Wilkes test and just for demonstration, this is the ANOVA table. And the most important part here is to see if our p-values are actually less than 0.05. If they are, then we have sufficient information to reject our null hypothesis. And our null hypothesis is if our means are equal to each other. And so it passed our Wilkes test to see if it passed our ROYS. It, does so that's fine hoteling lollies test that's okay too let's run the polis test and as we can see here our treatment factor is actually not significant it's actually greater than 0.05 and we'll take a look into this treatment factor very soon also one thing to note the polis test is actually considered to be probably the most powerful and more most robust model to use especially if our assumptions about linearity are not met uh, and so this is usually the go-to and the state-of-the-art test to actually utilize when we are working with like real, real life data. In order to find the relationships between our independent variables and our dependent variables, we're actually very unclear as to what effect our independent variable has, in this case our representation factor has, on our Y variables. And notice our Y variables, we have a lot of Y variables going on and we don't know what effect our representation factor here has on each and each individual factor we have going on over here. So one way to do this is to run a summary dot analysis of variance function and we will have all of the separate ANOVA tests associated with our given model and we have the given response variable. So in this case we have the cooking loss and we have the uh, independent variables that have somewhat of a influence on that cooking loss. As we can see, the representation factor actually has an effect, but treatment factor does not. We can look at our pH values. Um, none of our factors actually have an influence on our pH, pH values. Uh, moisture treatment factor actually does have a representation on the moist value and so on and so forth. So we can easily check out which of these factors have an influence on one of our dependent variables and we can easily just work from there. And so since our treatment value from what we've actually ran earlier here did not really have much of an effect on our overall model, one way to identify what is potentially the best treatment to use is to actually utilize the box plots and I'll just be running through all of our given dependent variables we have cooking laws pH moisture etc cooking time and we're going to be um, finding a relationship between those dependent variables and we're going to be finding in relation to the treatment value over here so I'll just be running through this uh, let's actually zoom in this plot actually let's just run everything over here Run all that, zoom that in so you can actually see that. Let's put me over here. So yes, um, in order to identify what is potentially the best treatment, we just want to see if the means are relatively equal. So if they're not relatively equal, like as if like there's like a nice horizontal line, then that treatment's probably not the best. We want to have a wide variety of the specific treatments that we are working with. And this is a one neat way in order to see what type of treatments are 
um, ones that we can take a look at further. As we can see here, for instance, the cook time versus the treatment, the means are relatively equal. So this is probably not probably like the best type of model in order to identify that with. And so we can actually take a further look at the cooking time in response. So yeah, so over here, the treatment versus the uh, cooking time to see if there's a relationship. There's not really a relationship because our p-value is so much greater than 0 0.05. And as we can see here, our means are actually really close. So this is actually another way to see, just like visually to see if our given model between the independent variable and our dependent variable has an influence with each other. And so from here, once we sort of identified what our given relationships, potential relationships has on our given dependent variables, we would want to run a linear hypothesis test over here. So loaded in this package is called can disk. It's very, very useful in order to run our generalized hypotheses testing and to identify contrasts. And so let's run our model two. In the second model, we have our y variables and we just have our treatment factors since we want to find a relationship between a some treatment factor and our given y variable. Same data set, cook turkey. And our hypothesis here, this is essentially related to our test that we have going on over here. So each of these represents a specific feature. So and, and these features represents the order at what treatment you are looking at. So if we're going to have a zero, we don't, uh, we're not going to be considering this particular uh, feature or value for our given uh, treatment value over there. So we also want to make sure that the summation of our contrasts are equal to zero. Uh, these are essentially just weights um, that are being linearly combinated with our given uh, values that we have over here. And we are essentially trying to find if there is a contrasting relationship between, in this case, our second treatments and our third treatments, see if there's a relationship there. And you can easily just run this through, through all of our five features that we have going on over here and see if there's actually a relationship. So one way to do this, we just run our hypothesis and run the linear hypothesis here. And as we can see, there is actually somewhat of a relationship uh, going on for our, our relationship for our y variables and treatment factor, especially if our treatment factors are being um, manipulated by our given weights that we have associated up here. And, and so since all of our tests are actually less than 5%, then this is a good sign that the specific, there's specific observations in our treatment are not valuable to our overall model. So let's actually take a look at the next one. Let's look at the fourth and fifth treatments to see if there's a contrasting relationship. Same thing, run uh, your hypothesis. I just named this hypothesis one and the same model that we're gonna be running over here. And boom, as we can see, our p-values are actually greater than 0 0.05, meaning that there is actually no contrasting influence between our fourth and fifth observations in our treatment factors over here let's zoom that up over here so fourth and fifth there's no contrasting relationship between the two in terms of all of our relationships of our treatments and our y variables so overall we have two different analyses that we can actually use we have the ANOVA test which we primarily use in order to identify the relationships among our independent variables and one dependent variable we have the MANOVA test which we will utilize if we have more than one dependent variable and to find relationships among our independent and dependent variables. In this case, I had seven. I had seven dependent variables and I wanted to find the relationships among the representation factor and the treatment factor we have up here to see if there's any relationships between these two independent variables with our seven dependent variables. We utilize the MANOVA in order to identify the relationships among our dependent variables, uh, and the ANOVA test does not take this into consideration. So if we're working with more than one dependent variable, I highly recommend that you utilize a MANOVA test to see if there's any relationships between the independent and dependent variables, and the MANOVA test actually considers relationships among the dependent variables together. So. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Turn those notifications on. I hope to see you in the next video.
Thank you so much for watching.